of Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan. Margaret Brennan, there's a, a lot of talk about increased sanctions, and I don't entirely understand what those increased sanctions would be, but there is a lot of talk about these would truly be punishing. This would be a whole other level of sanctions. What, what would we do to him? Would we cut off Russia entirely from any international banking? Will we cut off their ability to sell oil? What, what, what have you heard are the... What's the uh, what's the, the neutron bomb kind of the sledgehammer the, sanction? Exactly. Right. What are those that they're talking about? So financial warfare is what the West and President Biden is willing to do. He is not willing to send in combat troops to defend Ukraine, though he says he will send them into the 30 countries within NATO that border. Right. So if Vladimir Putin pushes the border of his country farther, closer to NATO, we are really in a high risk category. What they are describing. And, and it's not clear exactly which, which event would trigger those sanctions. But if it's an overt invasion, it would be uh, cutting off uh, Vladimir Putin's access to the dollar, essentially, to try to freeze transactions. It would be cutting off key bits of technology, export, import, things that would be important to his industries. But really, the point they think they can squeeze him is by hurting the oligarchs, those who are around him, not necessarily sanctioning Vladimir Putin himself, but all the guys who have money parked in London and Germany and assets all around the world, can they freeze those? Can they really put the squeeze on Vladimir Putin that way? That's what's being uh, looked at right now. But then you have Vladimir Putin fly to Beijing, as he did just a few weeks ago, stand next to the president of China and say, this is a new era, and we have an alliance and try to challenge the idea that the West can control him, although the Biden administration would say, you know, the U.S. dollar is still so dominant that he can't possibly be replaced uh, or have the trade that replaced by Beijing. Now, um, there was... Uh, Ukraine suffered its largest ever cyber attack this week. And, you know, no one is, you know, certain that it's Russia, but everyone is absolutely certain that it's Russia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blinken uh, said on your show three weeks ago that if Russia executed a cyber attack, there would be a swift and united response from the U.S. and Europe. Right. Um, has anyone in the administration said there will be a response to this latest cyber attack? Has there been any follow-up on that? You know, it's a funny thing. If you don't attribute it, you don't have to do anything about it for a little bit of time. Oh, that's interesting. But... Um, once you do, then you get people like me saying, OK, you attribute it. What are you going to do about it? So there's a little bit of wiggle room here. The, the, the Biden administration, uh, the, the great powers, the German chancellor were just flying back and forth uh, to Moscow, the French president. They're trying to find any window of diplomacy. I mean, Secretary Blinken says, I'm on the plane to go meet Lavrov. As soon as he says go, we will sit down. So there is room there still trying to create here. But in terms of the cyber attack, uh, I mean, President Biden said very clearly, if you go after our companies, you will pay the price. Because what Russia has done is used Ukraine as a test case for cyber attacks in the past. Of course, they would deny this. Um, but in 2017, you had a devastating cyber attack that rolled out in global impact. So, as you know, I mean, everything's connected these days. An attack in Ukraine doesn't necessarily stay in the computer systems in Ukraine. Let me... Let me uh throw out an idea here, and I'm not, I'm not trying to advise Vladimir Putin to do or not do anything, even though I'm sure he's watching right now. <laughs> Big fan. Um, if is so, that he... open invitation is Sunday's program. Oh, wow. Still yeah. have a slot? You still have a slot? You know, I think I could make time. I think I could. <laughs> he, Putin seems obsessed with Ukraine, besides wanting to restore the old Soviet uh, satellite states, the, the empire, the Soviet Union, but also because he feels threatened by NATO, and Ukraine mm -hmm. ends up being a buffer. And he, what, one of his demands, if unless I'm wrong, is that that he'll pull out if the West says we definitely will never include uh, right. Ukraine in NATO. But doesn't he have to go in now and take over Ukraine? Because based on this level of threat, the minute that he pulls away, isn't Ukraine going to go, OK, we're joining NATO? <laughs> because the reason why we can't fully defend Ukraine is because they're not a member of NATO. And there's going to be such an impetus for Ukraine to join when this is over. So he's got to go crush them. But then, here's where it gets Again, really... not my advice, just <laughs> gaming it out. Well, it gets a little tricky there because we did invite them back in, like, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, and... 
Ukraine isn't there yet. President Biden said they're not going to join anytime soon because they can't meet the standard at which they could be NATO members. But the United States is not willing to pull back that invitation. It's just kind of this, like, they're hanging out there, hoping to make it in. They're a partner. They're not fully a member. So long story short, uh, this is one of the reasons why the West says what Vladimir Putin is demanding is really just this maximalist position that they can't respond to. Um, but also, do you believe that's really what it's about? Now, before you go, your, your new show got a title, a new title in September. It went from Face the Nation to Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan. Are you, are you feeling, are you drunk with the power of the word <laughs> with? <laughs> now, is it? Did, that, can you tell me? Is that what? how it works? You're with. Oh, uh, Stephen Colbert. You're yeah, with. Yeah, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Though I just call it, as you can see from the sign, I just call it the Late Show with. <laughs> I heard, I heard you call it Nation Face. I do. I, I call like your that. show, matter of fact, I call you The Nation Face. <laughs> That's not I like The yeah. Nation Face. Our, our nation could have a worse face. <laughs> we, we can talk to CBS about the branding, but you know. Sure. You mean Paramount? That's right. Yes. Yes. Are you excited that we all work for Paramount now? Yes. Me too. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan airs Sunday mornings at 10.30 on CBS. Margaret Brennan, everybody. We'll be right back with the star of the Apple TV Plus show, Severance, Adam Scott. Thank you.